Hello, my name is Kelly Bluen. I am a certified Zen Tangle teacher. Welcome to 15 Minutes of Zen, where I guide you through creating a little piece of art using the Zen Tangle method of drawing. Today I'm using a two inch by two inch tile. Feel free to use any size that you want. I'm using a Micron PN plastic nib pen, a Zentangle brand graphite pencil for shading, and a Tortillon for blending. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start with pen. Feel free to start with pencil if you'd like to get started that way. Today we're doing a tangle called Well. This is created by Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas. And to create this one, we're gonna start by putting a little dot in each corner of our tile and then connecting those dots to create a square. After we make the square, we're going to Put a line across the middle and a line down the center. This is a grid pattern. It's also a fragment, which means it's something that can be repeated in this square shape over and over again. In each square, I'm going to put a little circle right in the middle. The size doesn't really matter on these. Um, it turns out great if you do it small, if you do them larger, it doesn't really matter. All right, and to create well, people like to think of it as like a number six. So you're making this arch and then kind of curving into this circle. So it's basically like making a number six. Um, for me, I just like to think of it as a little hill that bumps up and then comes down on the opposite side. So however you like to think of it, we just want that curvy shape there and then coming down to the opposite side. Turn my tile, I go to this corner of the box, do that same curve. So a little hill, trying to make it kind of an even hill coming around on the outside. And another hill. And another. That is your basic well shape. If you Google wells and tangle pattern, this is how it looks. And there's lots of fun things you can do to it after you do that. So we're gonna continue making that hill on each of these. I'm not gonna turn my tile right now because I don't want to make you dizzy, but if it's easier for you, go ahead and keep turning yours. Making those little bumps from each corner and back to that circle. I like to start with the top right side of the box, make my first bump that way, the next one, and the next one. Depending on which way you make those sixes and bumps go, you end up with a unique meta pattern, which is a pattern that's created after you've made your initial pattern. So look at all these fun little shapes in here. And it'd be really fun just to start decorating inside those. Okay, but for today, we are going to take that first six that we made, <clears throat> that first bump, and I'm going to go the opposite way. So this bumps out up that way. I'm going to come down this way and come to the middle of that next line. Basically, I'm making a petal shape that ends at that next six that I made. So curve down, trying to keep this kind of a nice wide petal. Coming down. And 
that coming down. I end up with a little floral shape. I'm just going to continue doing that. Remember, if your first line bumps out that way, you want to go the opposite way to create like a flower petal. Turn. You're starting in that corner. Coming down to about halfway. I feel like I could do a dozen videos on this one tangle. There's so many great ideas out there on how to decorate it after you make those initial lines. All right, I've got one more to do. <clears throat> that looks so cool. All right, now to kind of make these lines disappear that are in the middle, I'm going to mimic them or aura them. So I'm just gonna add a couple on top of that and a couple down below. And these ones that go up and down, I'm gonna mimic those. Now I could stop there, but I'm actually going to go ahead and do the outside also. So this one comes this way, so I'm going to aura that or mimic it by going right inside and making more of those lines. The most wonderful thing about Zentangle is they give you a starting point. And then you're free to get creative after that. So there's so many options. You could color these in all black and have a really dynamic, deep background. You could add some tipple, some little circles in there. So many options. Okay. Now I'm going to go to each of these little sixes that I first made, and I'm going to do some flicks. And when I say flick, I mean I'm gonna start in this little corner where I made that six, and I'm gonna start by pushing down hard and then lifting up. It just gives it a little bit of texture. Start in that little corner and lift up. Let's do three or four in each one. I feel like that adds a lot. You really have to kind of concentrate to get that feeling of starting heavy handed and then lifting your pen as you pull away. Okay. Now this center one here, I like how that made another little flower. So in this middle, I'm just going to darken in a circle. And then I'm gonna take each of these circles and I'm gonna darken them and just leave a little tiny bit of white in the middle. And then in the center one, I could do the same thing and do the flicks, but instead I'm going to do a line and a dot just to change it up a little bit. Feel free to do whatever you would like. Okay. And then just for fun, with some little enhancements, I'm gonna add some fescue. 
So maybe in this corner here, I'm going to mimic coming out this petal and put a little fescue. I could do one this way if I wanted. I could do one over here. I could do some a little bit longer. Just gives it a little bit of a flare. And maybe I want to add some little dots too. Okay. Time to do some shading. This is my favorite part. Pick up my little graphite pencil. And I'm going to start by going inside where all of these lines are because I kind of want those to disappear. I don't want that to be the main focus of my little piece. So I'm just going on the inside outer edge. Does that make sense? Inside outer edge. Of those kind of diamond shapes. Just put in a little bit of graphite. Then I'm also going to do the same thing on these outside triangles. I don't need a lot. Just a little bit. Shading is not necessary. Just the drawing part is relaxing and fulfilling and turns out amazing. Adding some graphite can really change up your tile. Picking up my tortillon for blending, I'm just going to smooth these and push the graphite a tiny bit towards that center area, but keeping that center white. So up here, I don't have much to do. Keep that center white. Just softening it a tiniest bit. Look how that pushes that area to the back of your tile. Okay, turn your tile as you go. So cool. All right, the last thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of shading to these petals. So I'm going to go where I made that first six and in that corner where it gets really dark in there, I'm gonna add a little bit of shading and then I'm just gonna follow to the right where this petal goes underneath this petal. Then I'm gonna go in the next little bit of a six and I'm gonna go to the right where this petal goes underneath. Just putting a little bit where each petal dips below the next one. Same thing over here, start in that little corner and follow that petal where it goes under the next one. You do not need a lot for this part. Those little flicks already give it some dimension. All right, take my tortillon. <clears throat> and I'm just going to push that up and away from that petal it goes behind. Just makes a little shadow. Not pretty. And this is the end of well. 
I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was relaxing. Such a cool little tile. Remember to initial the front of your work and on the back you can write the name of the tango, the date, and maybe a little journal entry about what's going on in your life. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye.